Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to begin our journey with natural language processing, making use of Hugging Face to allow it to provide us with pre-trained models that we can make use of for natural language processing. You can find the link to this Jupyter Notebook in the description. So we're gonna start looking at Hugging Face. I'm gonna go ahead and run this in Google Colab. It's on GitHub as well. But to actually run it, you're going to need to move it into Colab using the icon up here at the top. So we'll go ahead and run this. This just connects the drive for Colab. It also specifies TensorFlow 2.x. We're actually not using TensorFlow but this just is used commonly across this course because a lot of TensorFlow 2.x is used. We'll go ahead and install Hugging Face. Hugging Face, if you have not seen it before, they're just a juggernaut in the AI community, particularly in the area of natural language processing. They are a hub that has a bunch of pre-trained models that you can make use of. You can train models in here if you're actually paying for it. Everything's open source, everything's free, unless you're using their compute time to actually train your models. For this course, we're using the free version of Hugging Face. But this is going to let us focus on the applications of deep neural networks and focus on doing some very advanced things with natural language processing right out of the box without having to train. And Hugging Face, they're based on, their logo is the Hugging Face emoticon. So it, it's kind of cool. They're, they're a very cool company. A lot of really bright, bright people that I follow on Twitter work, work for this company. It's not installed as part of Colab just off the bat. So you do have to install it here. I give you the commands to do this. We're gonna look at in this introductory first module on Hugging Face, we're gonna see how to do several very common NLP tasks just literally right out of the box. You will not believe how small of code you need to actually do this. So the first thing we're going to do is sentiment analysis. And we're gonna make use of the we're going to make use of Shakespeare's 18th sonnet. This is, this is a very classic and short poem. This is the entire text to it here. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not gonna bore you with a poetry reading by me, but it's, it's a public domain famous poem that I, I often use for example text. If I run it here, it will load it from this URL location that I have at my website. We're going to make use of the Hugging Face pipeline. The pipeline, this deals with a lot of the pre-processing and post-processing that you have to deal with. Typically, you don't just put text raw right into a neural network. You're going to need to tokenize it to, to vectorize it into embeddings, all, all these various things. The pipeline deals with this for you. So this is how you instantiate the, the, the pipeline for a particular model. This is the model that we're using to do the sentiment analysis. And you'll see a lot of these in Hugging Face. So if you just copy that model name and do hugging face and just search on it, you can go directly into here and see that particular model, see its its usage and, and other things like that. There's about 3,000 or so trained neural networks all ready to go for a variety of tasks. So here, I'm gonna just go ahead and run it. It should give me exactly the same result that it had previously, but it's taking Shakespeare's Shall I compare thee to a summer's day love poem? And they're downloading the trained models that they need because these are fairly large models that, that have learned to do sentiment analysis. You can run it all right in Colab. 
I do recommend using a, a GPU, although some of these inference tasks can be run without a, without a GPU. But it's 98.4% uh, positive. So, and it is a very, a very positive poem. So this is how you do just basic sentiment, sentiment analysis on text. Entity tagging is quite useful. You can provide it with text and it will tag it according to these four entities, at least this particular model that we're making use of, the NER model in Hugging Face. And here I'm putting in some things that I know it's going to find. Abe Lincoln was a president who lived in the United States. And here I, I boot up the pipeline and I get the outputs from the neural network passing in this text to, I use text to because I don't want to, I don't want to use Shakespeare's sonnet again. And you can see that it finds several items in here, Abraham Lincoln and the United States. And it gives you the start and the end. So you can use this to rip out a bunch of useful elements inside of your text. This one's pretty amazing, question answering. This just makes you think that the singularity has arrived. So I use the sonnet from William Shakespeare. I use the question answering neural network that was trained in Hugging Face. And most of these neural networks that we're making use of, they're, they're either BERT or the GPT, uh, which both of those are advanced natural language processing trained models that you can fine tune to particular tasks of your own or use them out of the box. But here I'm using Sonnet 18 again. So I'm asking it a question about Sonnet 18 and I'm asking what shall fade? And if you look at Sonnet 18 again, so if we look through it, this is the sentence that it's gonna key on because I'm asking what shall not fade? But here we run it. It has to download the model, and you can see we're using a we're using a BERT model here, trained on Squad. Squad's a famous data set that a lot of these were benchmarked against, and it says Eternal Summer. I'm asking what shall fade, not what shall not fade. So it's kind of a trick question there because it the poem says the Eternal sh Summer shall not fade, and I'm asking what does fade. So if I say what shall not fade it probably gives me the same answer. Yeah, eternal summer. So you, you can throw knots in front of, of things and certainly confuse it a bit. But it does do an amazing job of answering questions based on source text, kind of like some of the intelligence tests that I've seen where they, they give you a passage, you read it, and then you answer some multiple choice questions about it. We can do language translation. Here I take the Shakespeare sonnet again and I translate it into German using this neural network that's on Hugging Face that is designed to translate into German. And you can see Sol, Icht, Dicht, Mit. I can't read German. Uh, well, I can read German. I just can't pronounce it necessarily like it should be. I don't even know how to pronounce an A with two dots, a umlet above it, or an interesting looking B. I can speak just enough, just enough Spanish to get a, to get a cerveza, but that's, that's about the extent of my knowledge. I know two words in Chinese, but they're the same, she she. Okay, so here we're gonna do summarization. An apple is an edible fruit, produced by the apple tree. I just threw in some Wikipedia kind of text here and you can run it. It's going to summarize this text too. It's using the summarization neural network that was trained and is available. And it this is kind of neat. So we're using the text generation library and we're going to have it look at summer's day again. And it, it goes through the whole summer's day and this text at the end, it generated. With those three sentences from the Merchant of Venice, it seems probable that there is something of the sort. I have no idea where it's going with that. But again, with that being said, let's revisit Shakespearean literature. 
So it, it, it knows what it's about. It's, it's certainly not going to put any starving poets out of, out of a job, but it, it figures out grammar. It figures out where commas go and all that kind of thing. I don't know that I got a little comma happy here. Yeah, my high school comp teacher would have a lot of fun with that. So these are just some of the capabilities that you get right out of the box with Hugging Face. In the coming sections, we're going to look more specifically at, specific, at attributes and areas of Hugging Face. Thank you for watching this video, and if you're interested in natural language processing, artificial intelligence, and just want to follow along with the deep learning course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a like if it was helpful to you. Thank you very much.